Hello to you, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. It's time for an update on what's happening in the tropics and the last few weeks have been super busy out there. Of course, last week, about a week ago, we had the landfall of Hurricane Helene, a monstrous category four hurricane that made landfall right around the big bend of Florida. After that produced catastrophic, widespread, devastating flash flooding and folks are still missing from that hurricane. Hundreds of people have been reported killed, so it's been a horrific event. Since Helene has weakened and moved on out of the area, we've had Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, and now Leslie, so definitely the tropics are remaining very active and very busy for the first part of October. I want to talk about where we've been so far for this hurricane season. Of course, we started off the season with Tropical Storm Alberto. Then after that, we had barrel roll right through the heart of Houston, producing wind gusts near 100 miles per hour and close to a foot of rain for parts of Houston. So some folks are still recovering from that. Since then, we've had several additional tropical storms and hurricanes, including Hurricane Debbie, Ernesto, Francine, of course, Hurricane Helene. Isaac, which grew to a category two hurricane, and most recently Kirk, which developed and strengthened to a category three. And Kirk is actually still out there in the central Atlantic. So here's an update for the hurricane season. We are now up to 12 named storms. Out of those, seven have become hurricanes. And out of those, three, Beryl, Helene, and Kirk have become major hurricanes. Of course, that's category three or greater. So it has definitely been a fairly busy season. The next name on the list would be Milton and then Nadine and then Oscar. And then we still have several more names that we could potentially have to use if things start popping up even more and getting even more active out there in the tropics. So I want to show you the tropical forecast. This is basically what we were thinking what happened as we went through the season. The average number of named storms, hurricanes and major hurricanes compared to what NOAA forecasted and what Colorado State University forecasters thought at the beginning of the season and throughout the season. So right now we're at 12 named storms, seven hurricanes, three major hurricanes. So that is very close to average, but both CSU and NOAA predicted an above average season. So CSU calling for 23 named storms, 12 hurricanes and six major hurricanes, and NOAA giving a range of 17 to 24 named storms out of those eight to 13 becoming hurricanes. And out of those, four to seven becoming major hurricanes. So thank goodness it hasn't been that busy, but we've still got a ways to go before we can say goodbye to our hurricane season. We've got all of October and all of November. So things are still cooking and cranking out there in the Atlantic Basin. In fact, as we get a glimpse of the Atlantic Ocean, you will notice one thing really stands out, that well-defined eye right in the center of Kirk, which is now a major category three hurricane still churning out there in the central Atlantic. We also have Leslie, which is now a tropical storm. That was previously tropical depression number 13. Leslie now off to the east southeast of Kirk in the eastern Atlantic, and both of these systems are fairly impressive. However, here's the good news. They are expected to stay out over the water, basically not impacting anyone fish storm. So that's good news for us. Here is a look at the latest track as of the 4 p.m. advisory for Tropical Storm Leslie or this is our Hurricane Kirk rather. We do have the potential for a little bit more strengthening into a category four and that is actually likely the forecast as we go into the next several days. We are going to be experiencing some pretty rough conditions out in the central Atlantic, but overall it's not going to be felt in the US because it's going to stay pretty far away from the US. Gradual weakening is expected for Hurricane Kirk. However, we are going to be dealing with a major hurricane in the central Atlantic, but it is going to take a turn to the north and east as we go through the next several days. So it should stay far away from the US. All right, here's a look at Tropical Storm Leslie, and you will see that it currently has 50 mile per hour winds with gusts to 65 miles per hour and movement is to the west at six miles per hour. So it will continue to push to the west and then make a turn to the northwest. Notice it becoming likely a category one hurricane. 
by Friday and Saturday still maintaining that hurricane status. So we will likely have Hurricane Leslie pretty soon, but it is still pretty far east in the Atlantic and not expected to threaten land. So both Kirk and Leslie are going to be fairly strong systems, but they will stay away from the U.S., so that is good news. So what could impact the U.S.? Let's talk about that. Well, we do have the chance for some possible development. We've had kind of some action, a little chaos in the Gulf of Mexico. We've had some disturbances popping up, some areas of showers and storms. Nothing that's been very organized, but across the Northwestern Caribbean Sea, parts of the Gulf of Mexico, we have had these bursts of showers and storms associated with this broad trough of low pressure. So there's a chance that could maybe organize and turn into an area of low pressure that could become a tropical depression or tropical storm. However, that chance has decreased a little bit. Previously, it was 40% a medium chance down to a low 30% chance of a tropical system popping up on us in the Gulf over the next seven days. If that were to happen, the next name on the list would be Milton. So this likely would be Tropical Storm or Hurricane Milton, but the models really are not showing anything getting very organized over the next several days. In fact, let me show you one of those models. This is a look at our exclusive Fox model futurecast. Notice between now and Friday night, I'll stop the clock here around 10 p.m., there are some showers and storms showing up around the north central and northwestern Gulf of Mexico, not far from Houston, but nothing that is organizing. We're not really seeing a well-defined center of circulation with an area of low pressure. So that is good news. No tropical storms or hurricanes developing over the next day or so. Going into Saturday afternoon, you will notice some of that tropical moisture starting to push into the Houston area, but it's not in the form of a tropical storm or hurricane. We just will likely get some brief bursts of heavier rain. Best chance will be Saturday afternoon and the best shot will be down in our coastal spot south of Houston. Also for the north central Gulf Coast, there will be the potential for some heavier bursts of rain. Now as we go into early next week, Sunday and Monday, it looks like that axis of heaviest rain starts to shift to the east as a cold front drops into the state of Texas. So that front will actually bring some drier air and some cooler air in for us. And that front will actually shift all of this tropical moisture off to the east and southeast. So if we get anything of a tropical nature to develop in the Gulf next week, it likely would get shoved over towards Florida. And that's where the models are predicting the heaviest rainfall, the biggest threat for flooding. As we go into Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, it is likely going to be for central and southern portions of the Florida Peninsula. So check out Houston. Not much rain showing up over the next seven days, maybe up to a one to two inches of rain for Houston all the way down to Galveston. But notice the purple showing up for Tampa, Cape Coral and over around the Orlando area. That's where we're going to have the highest risk for several inches of rain. Some of these areas may be picking up anywhere from three to almost eight inches of rain. So that is where we're going to have that potential for that big flood risk. Some of that heavy rain could make it up towards Tallahassee as well. Apalachicola, of course, one week ago, some of those spots picked up almost a foot of rain. So it certainly could get pretty hectic once again across Florida with a big flood threat next week. And there could be a tropical depression or tropical storm heading that way, but the models are not really pinpointing anything really serious at this point developing as far as a very strong tropical system. But of course, we will continue to watch it. All right, as far as the storm formation for the month of October, overall the risk starts to go down just a little bit, but you never want to let your guard down because you still see the orange highlighted area here. This is where storms usually form for the month of October, and you'll notice the western Atlantic popping up there. You can see the northwestern portion of the Caribbean and the southeastern section of the Gulf of Mexico. So those are the areas with the highest chance for tropical cyclones to develop, kind of the hot spots, if you will, for the month of October. Even in the yellow area, though, you see that it's still possible. And that includes the remainder of the Gulf of Mexico, the remainder of the Caribbean Sea, and of course, a big chunk of the Atlantic. So we've still got to be vigilant. We've got to watch closely because there's still the threat for more tropical action 
it's just a little bit lower than in September, but overall there will be that risk for tropical storm formation in the Gulf. But as you can see that orange area there, eastern portions of the Gulf of Mexico will have the highest risk. That's exactly where we could have a system developing early next week that could bring a lot of rain to parts of Tampa and maybe down towards Miami. So Florida likely going to be in that line of fire once again for that big flood threat. Water temps out there are still super warm for the most part, a little bit cooler for areas just south and east of Mobile, Alabama, just south of the big bend of Florida. Water temps have dipped to the upper 70s, but elsewhere it's mainly still in the 80s. So super steamy water out there. And of course, if we get this tropical system to get going in the Gulf this weekend or early next week, of course, that warm water will act as that fuel to keep it going and likely make it get a little bit stronger. So we've still got to watch things closely, but typically as we get towards the end of October, the risk for these tropical systems will start to decrease. So let's just try to get through the next few weeks. Hopefully we won't get anything heading towards Southeast Texas, but we've still got almost two months of hurricane season to get through. So of course we will be here daily, keeping you updated on exactly what is happening out there in the tropics because things can still be on the busy side. But right now, nothing that is likely going to be a threat to the Houston area over the next day or two. But of course, we're still monitoring a big chunk of the Gulf of Mexico for that low 30% chance for tropical cyclone development. So keep checking in with us. Of course, we'll continue to update you every afternoon on what's happening in the tropics. Right now, we've got Hurricane Kirk, Tropical Storm Leslie, and we could have potentially tropical storm Milton in the Gulf if a system develops, but right now just monitoring for that potential for development in the Gulf. Well, that will do it for your tropical weather update for today. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.